This is the second in our short series of screencasts about very basic harmony. Um, as I said in the first screencast, it's designed to tie in with my book, How to Really Play the Piano, which you can see here. And um, if you are reading from How to Really Play the Piano, we're going to very roughly cover the material on pages 14, 15 and 16. Okay. There we go. Uh, you don't have to be using the book, by the way, but um, it, if you are, that's where it needs to be. Um, one thing I, I should quickly say that I should have said in, in the first screencast, um, don't worry too much if, if you feel that you can't really follow what I'm actually doing on the keyboard, you know, if it's too quick or, or whatever. Um, the important thing is to listen uh, at this stage and gain an understanding of the overall concepts. I'm not worried or you know about you spotting each individual note as it happens. Okay, so in the first screencast we thought about what chords were and how chords work to support a melody and we made the point that if you have a sequence or progression, to use the technical term, of chords, um, that sequence or progression of chords will always work under a given melody no matter how the chords are played. Okay, as long as they're played in the right order and in the right timing, you can play your chord of, say, F major like that or like that and it'll still work in exactly the same way harmonically okay a little bit more about um, chord progressions um, terminology is tricky here because you'll often hear people talking about chord sequences chord progressions um, jazz musicians particularly sometimes talk about chord changes or that they just talk about the changes you know what are the changes for this song um, when we were looking at We Wish You a Merry Christmas in the last screencast, we looked at a number of chord symbols, and if you look under the keyboard now, you should be able to see them magically appearing. Um, what you can see there is all the chords strung together in three beat bars. Okay, You can see in the last bar but one, um, the, the chords are split, the G minor gets two beats and the C gets one beat. But the, apart from that, there's no indication of melody or rhythm or anything. It's just the bare bones of the harmony that is working under the tune. At, at a very basic level, if we know the tune, that's all the information we need right there to play the entire song because we can play the chords F, B flat, G minor, and, and, and know exactly where the song is going. Now, an important principle here is that it's not the actual identities of the individual chords that really matter it's the pattern of the progression okay it's the position of the chords relative to one another so this progression is in the, the key of F major and I am as I say if, if you read the book I'm working on the basis that you know a little bit about keys and key signatures and time signatures here this is in the key of F major what we could do is change the key and move the chords accordingly so if you look here we're magically transforming the chords of we wish you a merry christmas in f major into abracadabra a major okay the relationships between the chords are exactly the same but they've all been transposed up if you know something about intervals they've been transposed up um a major third which is uh, an interval of one, two, three, four semitones. Okay, so every chord of F has become a chord of A, every chord of B flat has become a chord of D, every chord of G minor has become a chord of B minor, and so on. The important thing is, as I said, that the relationships between the chords, the distances between them, if you like, on the keyboard, are exactly the same. Okay, so in our F major version of We Wish You a Merry Christmas, the first two chords are F and B flat. Look at the distance between them. It's one, two, three, four, five semitones from F, from the F to the B flat, their root notes. Okay, if we look at the first two chords of our A major version, they're A and D, and again, one, two, three, four, five semitones separate them. Okay, so they are. A, to, to use um, technical terminology, they were perfect fourth apart. The relationship between them is exactly the same, but it's in a different key. So, here's our chord sequence for We Wish You a Merry Christmas in A major, in action. 
As you can see, the harmony works perfectly well under the melody in the different key. The same principle applies for the last one. You could play those chords in any particular way. Doesn't matter how you play them, as long as they in each chord includes its proper constituent note, they'll still always work under the melody of We Wish You a Merry Christmas. So what do you need to take away from this screencast and the last one? Really, it's three basic lessons. First of all, any chord is defined by the notes it contains. Okay, so as we saw, C major always contains a C, an E and a G at the very minimum and can contain any combination of them. B flat major, the chord, always contains a B flat, a D and an F. Any combination, it's always B flat. Okay, don't worry if you don't know all these yet, it's something you can learn, it's the concept that's important. Second major takeaway, um, chords are the building blocks of harmony and work under a melody. If you have a chord sequence, for example the ones we looked at for We Wish You a Merry Christmas, however you play the chords in that sequence it will always work under the melody. As long as you play them in order and in time with the melody, you can play, you know, you can play them like that or you can play them like that. They'll always work under the melody, at least in harmonic terms. They might sound horrible if you play, you know, really sort of loud jangly chords under a very gentle tune, but in a musical and harmonic sense, they will work. Third takeaway, when it comes to chord progressions, it's the relationship between the chords that matters. You can take um, a, a melody that's in a major key and play it in any other major key, and the chords change key just like the melody does okay it's the relationship between the chords that matters we'll talk more about relationships between chords in uh, the next screencast and the one after in the next one we're going to be talking about the natural chords of any given key and how you form the natural chords of any given key and moving a little bit deeper into the music theory side of things as I said, if all, this all seems a bit rocket science-y, don't worry. If you're looking back through these screencasts and thinking, oh God, I can't follow his fingers, he's going far too fast. D don't worry too much about that. It, it's I'm, I'm not really bothered about what you, what you see me doing on the keyboard. What's important is that you hear and internalise the concept. If you've got any questions, any comments, if anything's not clear, then by all means leave a comment either in the blog post on Jamcast where these screencasts are posted or on the YouTube page where you'll find them and I will come right back to you and answer as best I can.